and then uh, actually by default the log action does not have all of the uh, connections that we need. We need to give it a string connection. Um, so we can do that by right clicking all uh, right clicking on it, going to expose variable, string string. And as you can see, here is our string connection that we're going to use. So we're going to drag from there to the string variable that we have. And then to finish this off, we want to go to the A is greater than B connection on the int counter and drag it to the in connection of the log action. And uh, we can test all of this out. So I'm going to rebuild my level and then go into the game. Now I'm going to create 10 Plinko balls. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And you can see the 10 balls. And then the next time I press it, it should uh, say reset on the screen. And it just did. And uh, the counter has been reset. Great. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up an object list to keep track of all of the Plinko balls that we've created. So that way we can delete them later on. So I'm going to go into my Kismet editor. As you can see, I'm trying to go into my Kismet editor by clicking on the button, but it's not working. Well, that's because I actually have it already opened, but it's just minimized down here in the corner. So that's something to keep track of. I've already made that mistake a couple of times, uh, so I'm just pointing that out. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is create a modify object list action that actually that uh, allows us to modify an object list. Um, so we do that by right-clicking, going to New Action, Object List, Modify Object List. The next thing we're going to do is actually create an object list that, uh, that the Modify Object List is going to put the Plinko balls into. And we can do that by clicking uh, New Variable, object, object list. And uh, while that's great and all, uh, we still need to do one more thing. We need to use an object variable uh, so that way the object, the modify object list action actually knows what to put into the, uh, the object list. The object variable is going to uh, basically point to our uh, our Plinko balls. So we're going to do that by uh, going to new variable, object, object. And uh, it has a bunch of question marks on it, but that's actually to link the finished uh, connection of the active factory to the add to list uh, connection of the modify object list action. So once the active factory is finished, uh, creating a Plinko ball, it's going to add. Uh, it's going to add something. We haven't defined what yet, but it's going to add something to the uh, object list, and we do that to the uh, to the object list. Then we have to tell the object, the modify object list action, what we're going to put into the object list. So we do that by going to the spawned uh, connection of the actor factory and connecting that to the object variable with the question marks. I'm going to move some of this around a little bit so it's easier to see what's going on. And then I'm going to finish it off by connecting the object reference connection of the modify object list action to the object itself. So to summarize, once the actor factory is finished creating our Plinko ball, it's going to take that Plinko ball, which is our object, then it's going to tell the modify object list to put it in the object list. So the next thing we're going to do is set up a destroy action that deletes everything from our object list. So we can do that by uh, right clicking, going to new action, actor, destroy. And uh, we're actually going to have to move around some of these things a little bit just so, uh, just to keep it organized. So I'm going to take these 
and uh, move them up. Put my destroy action over here. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, I have to create. I have to uh, link the target connection from the destroy action to the object list since that's what it's going to destroy. And then I want to uh, link the out connection of the destroy action to the empty list connection of the modify object list. Because uh, basically after we destroy uh, everything in our object list, we want to make sure our object list is empty. And lastly, we're going to go to the A is greater than B connection of our integer counter and connect that to the in connection of the destroy action. And uh, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and uh, build everything and test it out. All right, so I'm going to first create uh, 10 Plinko balls. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the next time I press the trigger, if we set up everything correctly, it's going to reset the counter and it's going to delete all of the Plinko balls. And there we have it, it works. So now, uh, on to the next portion where we're going to show you uh, how to set up the, uh, the lights and the scoring. Okay, now that we've got our Plinko ball spawning functionality built in, we need to work on the scoring bins. So as you've seen in this, um, in this tutorial so far, we've got our scoring bins at the bottom with three lights and three triggers. So go ahead and add the triggers as Wayland's already described to you on how to do that. So go ahead and add three triggers into the scoring bin and feel free to pause at any time. We're going to kind of speed things up a little bit. So pause and um, get that done and then resume the video when you're ready. So then we're going to then add the lights in. <coughs> and to do that we need to actually do it a little bit differently than your standard point light. And we're going to open up the content browser right up here where my mouse is. We're click that. We're going to go to actor classes. We're going to go to light. We're going to go to point light, and we're going to go to point light toggleable. So once you have that selected, you can actually close a generic browser and right click in an editor window and say add point light toggleable here. And then position that inside, inside the scoring bin. Do that for all three scoring bins. And if you want to change the colors, do fun things like that, go ahead and do that. I've already got my lights up, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this because I don't need it. It's already in here. So go ahead and get all that set up. And if, again, if you need to pause, and resume, go ahead and do that so you can keep up. Okay, now that we've got our triggers created, we need to make sure that their collision volume is large enough to cover the entire scoring bin. As you can see in my window here, I've got this cylinder surrounding the trigger. If you don't see a cylinder around your trigger, that's because you have collision hidden. To unhide it, click on this viewport options button, go to show, and then go to collision. Or the hotkey is the letter C on your keyboard. So I've got my collision turned on so I can see that mine is in fact large enough, but that's because I've already set it up. So yours probably is too small. So let's go and hit our F4 key with the trigger selected. That'll bring up our trigger properties. We're going to go to trigger, cylinder component, and these two fields right here, collision height and collision radius. Go ahead and change these until they fill out your scoring bin. Make sure that you don't come outside of the, uh, <coughs> the collision volume that you've set up so the player can't run into them. Um, but make sure that, that the volumes on all three scoring bins and their triggers are large enough so that if the balls hit on the edges that the trigger still recognizes them. So go ahead and get that set up. 